Hi all you wonderful people and welcome to Simply Scoop and welcome to Ask Mark. I am here for mentioned Mark and I am a former scuba diving instructor and I'm here to answer your questions about scuba diving. So in today's show we're talking about sleeveless suits, uh, octo ports on your regulator, neoprene alternatives, wing buoyancy, travel BCDs and suit storage. Okay um, if you have any questions that you want me to answer let me know down in the comments below and if you use the hashtag AskMark in your comment then it might get mentioned in next week's show. So let's jump straight into the first question which this week comes from Miranda Hammonds and they ask I'm looking to purchase a lightweight wetsuit for diving in the Caribbean however I can't find a traditional shorty in my size there are sleeveless with full length legs or full length sleeves with short legs um, which would you recommend and why Okay, so you're going you're looking at shorties or not full length like steamer suits you have some that have arms but no legs and then you have some that have no arms but do have legs okay um, so the main thing that comes into my mind when I'm thinking about sleeves is going to be protection from the Sun um, because when you're on the surface especially in the Caribbean you are exposed to a lot of, um, uh, sort of radiation from the Sun so you do want to protect yourself I'm thinking about bumping into things and scraping against stuff and just um, uh, just like stinging things in the water and then I'm thinking about buoyancy so pros for having your your arms covered are mainly for the sun um, because that's the first thing that gets hit not saying that you can't get sunburn on your uh, on your legs I've had that before where well, I've just been wearing a, a shorty and the rib journey was quite long I wasn't wearing um, uh, uh, sunscreen because it, it wasn't sort of reef friendly at the time and yeah just spending a lot of time just sat on the side of a rib uh, yeah I just ended up with this really awkward uh, sort of sunburn on like my lower thigh uh, so yeah <laughs> it is worth protecting yourself and covering yourself up um, with it on your arms yeah sometimes you tend to brush up against something um, but whenever I tend to uh, sort of brush up against um, something like fire coral or something it tends to be my legs because my arms I don't tend to use them too much I tend to sort of tuck them in out of the way whereas my legs are the things that's moving uh, and yeah the the one time that I've bumped into some fire coral it has been on my leg um, flipping it over if you have um, just your legs then I'm thinking more about buoyancy we did have in my uh, in my first dive center back when I was an instructor there I um, I was going through we had this like library of school suits and I was just tidying up one day and I found this five mil like salopettes so it had uh, sort of sleeveless uh, but it was full suit and when you're teaching in the pool for a long time sometimes a shorty isn't quite enough you do need a little extra uh, sort of oomph so I thought hey I'd try it out and because you've got all that extra neoprene on your legs lower down it really shifts your center of buoyancy so you do go a bit sort of feet upwards so that's something worth considering whereas when it's on your arms it's a bit closer to your center of buoyancy especially if you tuck your arms in so for that reason I'd probably go with legless um, and also your legs don't tend to get as or at least it depends my legs don't tend to get as cold as my arms do um, because you're continually moving them the blood flow is going down to your legs and you've got sort of the big thigh muscles as well so lots of blood flow lots of heat creation there whereas your arms don't tend to do that much in the water so lower blood flow just means that your hands are getting a little, little bit colder so I'd probably go with long sleeve arms instead of long sleeve legs but otherwise yeah that's that's probably the, the, the direction I'd go question two comes from David Brayford and they ask what side of the first stage left or right low pressure port should you connect an octopus hose so this is very much up to you um, that's why you tend to have so many low pressure ports on all sides of your uh, of your first stage but traditionally regulators come over your right hand shoulder regulators right and then buoyancy left or everything else to the left and that just makes things a lot neater it's quite industry standard when you're doing your um 
uh, your regulator or octo retrieval. It's always right hand straight out, go down and then do the windmill and it ends up on your right hand side. Whereas if your octo is on the left hand side, then you, you do that, you can't find it, then you have to do it again to get your, uh, your alternate. So traditionally your octo comes from your RAM um, from your right hand side. It helps with a few things. One of them is that our um, our snorkel is always on the left hand side. Regulator comes from the right, so the snorkel is out of the way, um, and it just makes it quite standardised. But all my um, my alternate air sources, my octos always come from the uh, from the right hand side. The main downside to that is with the traditional design of a second stage if you have a uh, if you have it on a uh, on a shorter hose it can give you a um, a weird sort of kink <clears throat> so if this hose was a little bit shorter uh, and that comes out and then I have to donate it to my buddy, you then make this kind of S shape with the hose to be able to donate it. So a lot of people when they're um, a little bit pushed, they, they've tried to breathe in their regulator, they've got nothing, they come up to you, I'm out of air, they, they grab the, uh, the second stage. If you, um, if you grab it and you're not thinking too much, it's quite natural to have it that way. But of course, then the second stage is upside down. You're gonna get a very wet breathe because the purge valve is now on the highest point. It actually has to be that way round, which kind of kinks the hose a little bit when you're face to face. So that's the only downside for having your alternate air source on a um, uh, on your right hand side it's not the end of the world um, but what i would do is have it on a slightly longer hose just so that that uh, sort of s shaped kink isn't going to become too much of an issue because if you suddenly turn or something then it just puts a lot of tension on that hose and it can just like lever that second stage out of their mouth but as long as it's nice and long you've got plenty of movements and as long as you're fairly close to one another in sort of clear blue waters nice and upright then yeah it should be fairly easy um, that would be the only reason for having it coming from the left just so the hose routing is a little bit neater but uh, realistically i'd put it always on the right hand side that way it's very sort of industry standard and uh, and, and it just works basically Lutong Baru asks, hi Mark, hope all is well. Yes, all is well. Um, I'm considering purchasing the new Sharkskin Titanium Chill Proof Jacket Top. It says it can give warmth equivalent to three to five mil wetsuit. So dump your old wetsuit. Does this technology actually work? It's a pretty hefty price, so I'm thinking twice before purchasing it. I'm, I dive in warm water in Asia, about 28 to 30 degrees. So this is neoprene alternatives. Uh, I don't think I have any around here. I've got some upstairs and it's a, um, yeah, it's a neutrally buoyant wetsuit or at least neoprene alternative. When it claims three to five mil, I think five mil is probably a bit ambitious. Most of the ones that I've seen and used usually claim about two to three mil of neoprene equivalency. It's really hard to compare warmth insulation of two different materials because everybody feels the cold slightly differently um, and each dive is going to be slightly different but they do work and one of the main benefits for me is that they're neutrally buoyant so you don't need to add or remove any um, uh, any lead but as far as insulation I haven't tried the new one, didn't know there was a, a new one coming out. I haven't looked at shark skin in, uh, in a while. But, um, but yeah, for claiming it to be equivalent to anywhere upwards of five mil, I think is quite impressive. They've either got some new technology uh, or yeah, they're, they're just guesstimating because it's really hard to sort of say, yeah, this is equivalent to a, to a five mil. It will keep you that warm because not even all five mils are the same. You get A class five mils and you get D class five mils. Um, but yeah, they are quite expensive, but they definitely do work. I wouldn't say anywhere near a five mil. I'd probably say three mil is probably in the upper limit unless there is some special fancy new technology. Um, but yeah, it, it will be a good addition to your, um, uh, uh, what you call it, to your kit locker because, I mean, I've got some, I've got a, um, 
I've got a vest, so that helps to just boost my core a little bit. You can wear it by itself, nice and neutrally buoyant. You can wear it under your shorty, you can wear it under your five mil, just to boost up the, um, the insulation over your core. Um, but yeah, they do work, but I, I wouldn't promise it would keep you as warm as a five mil. Bloody Marvellous says, hey Mark, loving the videos, thank you. Uh, and thanks so much for helping me decide on a regulator. You are welcome. Uh, my question is on wing capacity. Okay, so if an 18 pound wing has enough buoyancy for travel, so probably used with a thin wetsuit or a rash vest, which have very little buoyancy, what would you um, want to go with Sorry, why would you want to go with a 30 pound or a 40 pound wing? What's the, um, uh, what's the use case for the additional buoyancy or, or for twins 60 pounds or 90 pounds um, when a 40 pound wing apparently is also enough? So buoyancy in wings is more about redundancy. Um, and if you are just diving in a rash vest, you're diving somewhere nice, warm and sunny, not too much lead, then yeah, you can get away with a really skinny wing because that's all you really need. As long as you're not overloaded with lead, it should be perfectly fine and you should have plenty of buoyancy with that. However, when you get into colder waters and you're starting to wear wetsuits, the buoyancy of your wetsuit is going to reduce the deeper down you go. So you need a decent amount of redundancy in that wing to compensate for that. Because when you've got like a, a five mil wetsuit at the surface, you are quite buoyant. So you need to add more lead to compensate for that so you can physically get under the water when your wing is completely empty. But then as you descend, your wetsuit is compressing and becoming less and less buoyant the further down you go, but your lead is always negatively buoyant. That's always dragging you down. So you need that just redundant, I'd rather have too much buoyancy in my BCD than not enough. There have been some cases where inexperienced divers have been wearing like recreational wings and they dive down and they try to go sort of deep and then they realize that even with a full BCD, they literally don't have enough positive buoyancy to ascend because they've reached this kind of point of no return as far as buoyancy goes. Um, and then bad things happen basically. So when you're getting into the, the 30 pound, 40 pound kind of argument, it's kind of the equipment that you're taking with you and like the depths that you're going. It's always that sort of balancing act of what do you need and uh, and what do you require? Um, because yeah, I'd, I'd rather have enough buoyancy should I be going down to those kind of depths um, to compensate for any loss of buoyancy of my exposure protection. If you're diving with a dry suit, then chances are you've got, uh, you can change your buoyancy of your exposure protection at depth. Whereas with a wetsuit, when you're going deeper and deeper, you can't adjust the buoyancy of your wetsuit to compensate for the compression. So um, yeah, you need to uh, sort of use your, your bladder, your, uh, your wing to compensate for that. So yeah, look at the equipment that you're diving with, the, uh, the negative buoyancy of that, and the, um, the, the change in buoyancy at depth of any exposure protection and air spaces and that kind of stuff. But in general, I'd rather have too much than, than not enough. Jay asks, hi Mark, I'm in the market for a travel BCD. I've been looking at the Scuba Pro Lighthawk or the Mares Magellan. Uh, do you have a preference and any advice would be appreciated? Thanks. Um, yeah, so they're both travel BCDs. The, uh, I used to dive something very similar to the, uh, to the Lighthawk, the, uh, the Oceanic Biolite. And yeah, perfectly fine. Um, nice BCD, simple. Uh, padded straps which are quite nice uh, you do it sort of has integrated weights but it's never really expressly um, sort of spoken about their um, their pouches being integrated weights they're more small pockets with uh, with pinch clips um, on the uh, on the light hawk wing style it's designed to be a sort of a stripped down BCD, so it's nice and light. The Magellan, the Magellan is quite recent. That's only a year or two old compared to the Lighthawk, which um, is probably about four or five years old now. Uh, the Magellan, the main differences are gonna be in the straps. 
So those shoulder straps, instead of these straight padded shoulder straps of the Light Hawk, the Magellan are kind of L-shaped. So they wrap around, they're a bit more ergonomic and, uh, and stripped down. Magellan does have full-on uh, integrated weight pockets. So, uh, and they have a, a quick pinch clip release. It's not their, um, their SLS. Some people don't get on with the, uh, the SLS um, weight system. So on the, uh, the Magellan, they just got pinch clip weight releases. It does have a roll down pocket as well. Um, otherwise, similar. Um, as far as the inflators go, I can't remember which inflator is on the um, uh, on the Light Hawk, but the the Magellan has their uh, Mara's Ergo inflator. Either way, they're both lovely BCDs. I'd probably give the edge to the uh, to the Magellan just because it's newer, um, it's a bit more ergonomic, uh, and the integrated weight pockets are proper integrated weight pockets instead of sort of because on the Light Hawk you have those small little pockets that if you want to use them for lead weights you you can turn them upside down um, and then it's kind of gravity assist but it's not really what it's designed for so it's kind of best to wear a uh, separate weight belt whereas on the Magellan is separate so it gets it off your um, uh, your actual hips um, but yeah I, personally I'd go from the Magellan just because it's a, a newer BCD, but either way, they're, they're both nice, lightweight travel BCDs. Christos ZS asks, Hi Mark, what's the better way to store a wetsuit? Rolled and kept inside a dry closet or hanged with a wide hanger in the basement, but it's not as dry. Um, Okay, so between those choices, you have a cupboard inside, but there's not enough space to hang it up, so you have to roll it, or you have space in the basement to hang it up, but it's a little bit humid or it's, it's a little bit damp. Um, mm, between those two choices, I'd probably hang it in the basement. Um, yeah, with a wide, uh, a wide uh, coat hanger, something with some really big shoulders because as soon as you um, sort of fold neoprene it kind of crimps and creases that one edge whereas if you've got some really big sort of shoulders on your um, uh, on your coat hanger then it helps hold the shape of the um, uh, of the suit rolling it is an acceptable alternative but it's always better to have it sort of hung upright I get what you're coming across with it being not as dry, but as long as you've washed and cleaned your suit beforehand, there shouldn't be anything nasty that can grow in it, no mold or anything. Um, but do double check that first. So after your dive, wash your suit thoroughly, dry it thoroughly, and then hang it up in the basement. That's kind of what I'd say. And then check it every now and then. Whenever you go down to the, um, uh, to the basement, it's worth just double checking it. Um, you kind of want to avoid folding and rolling suits if it can be avo uh, avoided, because not just where it's uh, sort of creasing and, and folding over, but where hard sections like the zipper end up digging into its opposing side. When you get brand new wetsuits, you'll find um, I usually have thousands of these knocking around. They have those little square sections of neoprene um, over all of the zippers, over all of um, sort of any section of the suit that's uh, harder than neoprene, just to add as a bit of extra padding during storage and transport. So even if you are rolling it and you, you put a nice uh, sort of roll bar in that fold so it's not folding in particular, uh, it's a nice round section whenever the um, uh, the hard zipper is sort of leaning against the uh, the neoprene it does start to bed in and you're going to start to lose insulation in that area um, it's not the end of the world if you um, if you use your suit and you're sort of bending and flexing it can help to uh, relieve some of those creases and the uh, indentations um, but of those two options personally i'd probably hang it up and those are my questions for this week. Good questions. Uh, again, like last week, fantastic questions. So well done, everybody. Um, very interesting questions. Hopefully they helped you out. If you have any questions, of course, let me know down in the comments below. And if you use the hashtag AskMark, it just makes it a lot easier for me to find um, because when I'm researching for the um, for the show, basically go through the uh, the hashtag and the ad, that 
adds to my list of questions. But if you do have any uh, sort of regular questions, I do add them as well. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, do all that kind of social media stuff. Um, there'll be lots of interesting buttons underneath this video for you to click. Make sure lots of thumbs up and all that kind of stuff. Remember to head over to simplyscuba.com. We do sell some pretty interesting scuba diving stuff. And now is really that season where all the 2022 stuff starts to get released and announced on the website. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.